So we have our hero shooting bullets and you can move, so that's wonderful. Um, now, let's see if we can actually destroy the enemy. A um, couple things. First thing, let's get the bullet off the screen. So that's kind of annoying how the bullet stays at the top of the screen. But we can fix that using our if statements. So I'm going to go into the bullet class because the bullet is the one doing the moving. And I'm going to say to the bullet, don't forget, I'm talking like this because I want to remember we're actually coding in the bullet class. So I'm saying, hey bullet, if your y coordinate gets too low, so if the y coordinate gets, say, below 5, that means it's really, really close to the top of the screen. Well, then I want you to go away. And the way we say go away is we get the world that we're in and we remove the object. And notice I'm typing remove object. That's because I've coded for a long time. If I type get world dot and then control space, I get all the things that I can do with the world. And what I want to do here is just remove an object. So that's what I want, but there's lots of other things that might come in handy later. So I'm going to remove object, and what I want to remove is the bullet. So how do I refer to the bullet when I'm in the bullet? Well, the way we do that is there's a keyword, this. And this means basically get rid of myself. So what I've said is, all right, bullet, move, and then we check to see if the Y coordinate is too low, meaning that the Y coordinate has gone too far up the screen, bullet, please go away. And now if I shoot, you can see the bullets are going away. This is important for a couple of reasons. A, it looks better, but B, um, if the bullets were to stay on the screen, they take up memory. And the more I shoot, the more of the computer's RAM I would be using, and ultimately my, my game would crash eventually. Um, or if not crash, it would start to lag a lot anyway. So this is much better. Okay, great. So we've got our bullet going up the screen, going off the screen. Let's pick an enemy. So again, I go here and I go new subclass, and I'm going to type the word enemy because that's the class we're making. And our enemy for today is going to be the big bad, I don't know. And again, I'm going to change this later, so it really doesn't matter the image I pick, because later I'm going to go get um, some pictures from the internet and make it look like real Space Invaders. But for now, the enemy is going to be this snake. So I hit OK. And notice I don't have any enemies on the screen. I could put enemies on the screen by doing it the old way that we learned at the start, where we click, 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 but that's no good. So the first thing I want to do is go into the world code, and I want to put some enemies on the screen. Now, I've already put hero on the screen, so I'm going to copy that line, and I'm just going to change hero to enemy, like that. And if I do this, you can see now... I have two things on the screen at the exact same spot. I want, let's say, an enemy to appear right here. Let's just put it higher for now. And so I'm going to go back into the world code, and I'm just going to change the Y coordinate to, say, 100. So if I run this, well, I don't even have to run it because it just builds the world for me. And there we go. Now we have an enemy. Okay, so let's see if we can shoot the enemy. Now, the collision code is going to be in the bullet. So I'm going to go into the bullet, and just like I did before, I'm going to do another check. I'm going to say, if we hit the enemy, let's make the enemy and the bullet disappear. And the way I do that is rather complicated. So I'll walk through. I'm going to type it, and then I'll explain it. So I type enemy. Um, we'll call it E equals and then in brackets, enemy, get one intersecting object, enemy.class. And I just click off to make sure it works. Yeah, it understood that. What this line says is, and don't forget, we're the bullet. So it says, hey bullet, let's check to see if we intersected with one object of the enemy class. So we're looking to see if 
we hit an enemy. Every single time the bullet acts, every single time it moves, we say, did we just hit an enemy? If we did, we're going to store it in what we call a variable. So we're going to store it as E. So whatever enemy that we hit, we're going to call it E. Fair enough. Now, most of the time when I shoot, if we go back here and shoot, my bullet, as it acts and goes up the screen, so I'm going to see if I can shoot, pause it. Now, see my bullet? Every time I hit act, it moves by a little bit. So every single time, we're doing a check to say, if you're at the top of the screen, go away. If you're going to hit something, go away. So every single time, we're running these checks. And at this point, it says, oh, I've gone too far. I better get off the screen. If I shoot again, um, what I want you to picture, and I got too many bullets, we'll fix that later too, uh, it's going to say, did I hit the snake? 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 Most of the time the answer is no. And if the answer is no, well then E, don't forget, E is what we're going to store as the enemy we hit. Well, if we didn't hit anything, that's going to be nothing. And the computer world word for nothing is null. So, our next line is going to be if E is not equal to null. So, again, this is probably the most confusing we've got so far, but we're walking through it. This line says, did we hit an enemy? If we did, well, we're going to store the result of the intersection check here. If we have hit if we don't hit nothing, it's a double negative. If we don't hit nothing, that means we did hit an enemy. So this will run. So whatever I put in here is going to happen if we did hit an enemy. Because E is not null. And if E is not null, that means it must be something. We must have hit something. Phew, tough stuff. Now here is where I want to do a couple things. I want to remove the bullet, and I already have the code for that right here. So I'm going to copy-paste here, but also I want to remove the enemy. And so I'm going to remove E, like so. So the bullet moves. We check to see if we hit an enemy. If we did hit an enemy, we want to remove the enemy, and we want to remove the bullet. Okay. Now, we are going to get an error when I run this, but I want you to see it because it's very common. But notice the class is compiled, no syntax errors. That means it's going to work. So when I shoot, ah, you can see I have an error. So I told you there was going to be an error, and that's fine. It says, actor not in world. I wanted to show you this error because this is probably the most common error that you're going to get as we make these games. And if I click here, it takes me right to the line where the error is. And notice the error is here. But the computer told us that this was fine. So the error that we've got is called a runtime error. It's an error that occurs when we play the game. It's not that the computer doesn't understand what we want to do. It's that the computer has done something and now it, it, it doesn't work. And what happened is we hit the enemy with a bullet. So this happened. We removed the enemy from the world. And then we still have code down here. So the rule is this line here if this gets run, you're removing the enemy from the world, you can't go and run more code after that. So down here, I have a check that says if the Y coordinate gets too low, do this. I can't do this and this at the same time. So there's a one word fix here that we're going to learn, and that's it. Else. And this connects these two if statements and says, okay, well, if this happens and we do this, then we're not going to also do this. Because the word else means in other words, or in the other case. So if this is true, then this won't be true. So that way we're not running this line twice. We're not going to remove 
the object from the world here and then try to do this because that's illegal. You can't remove something from the world and then try to do something with it. When I'm in class, I do a little example where I ask a student to leave the classroom and then I talk to that student. I can't talk to the student if they're not in the classroom. Just like I can't try to do something with an object if I've already removed it from the world. So this else here protects against doing something if I've removed it from the world. So let's try it and see if that fixed it. So I shoot and it seems to work. The snake goes away and all is well. Now if I go to my world, let's put a couple more enemies in there. So I'm going to copy that line, paste, paste, and I'm going to, oh, let's put five, why not? I'm going to put enemies at, uh, let's say, 50, 100, 150, 200, and 250. And notice I'm changing only the x coordinates. So now if I go back here, I have an array of snakes. They're too close together. I should have done a little bit better on my spacing so I can go back, change it. This is the beauty of computer science, by the way. You don't have to be right. You can just run it, and if it doesn't work, you go back and fix it, and hey, there we go. That's better. Not perfect, but better. And if I run it now, I should be able to go here and mow down some snakes. So we are getting closer and closer to making Space Invaders work. Um, Next up, we're going to have to fix our bullet. We're going to have to uh, get some snakes moving. Lots of things to do, but uh, we're moving along.